dear friends in Christ, welcome to you as we celebrate another Sunday together uh, through this online broadcast. Uh, thank you for inviting me into your homes again as we celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We're heading towards the end of the church calendar year. And so today we pray that the Lord may open our eyes, open our hearts, open our ears to hear his word and let, it really, uh, let us really reflect on it uh, for the rest of of this coming week. Let's begin together with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today in the Gospel, Jesus gives a parable about the landowner entrusting his property uh, to his fellow workers. And some people take what's given to them and they invest it. They, they go out and they use these talents and they make more money with them. And someone took the talents and sort of buried it because they were afraid of what the master would say. And when the master came back and saw that he was given so much and didn't do anything with it, he was very upset. And so we're going to reflect today on some of the things that God gives us in our lives. Are we really using the gifts, the talents that God gives us, or are we burying them uh, and not using them? But every time we gather together for the Eucharist, we first pause for a moment, we call to mind our own failures, our own sins, and we ask God to, for his love and his mercy so that we can worthily enter into these sacred mysteries. Let's take a moment now to do that. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And today, as we celebrate the Lord's Day, we praise the Lord with the Gloria, as together we proclaim glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A capable wife who can find her. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with, with willing hands she considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with the strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. 
Her lamp does not go out at night. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teachings of kindness is on her tongue. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her, her works praise her in the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. Blessed, blessed is, is everyone, everyone who fears the Lord. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be happy and it shall go well with you. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Blessed is the one who fears the Lord. Thus shall this man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourself know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them. As labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness. For that day, to surprise you like a thief, you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two to another, one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave, for you have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, 
Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given." and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This year, we know, has been a challenging one for a lot of us. You know, we've had ups and downs. We've been locked in our houses, not able to go anywhere. And then we've sort of had a little bit of freedom in the summertime. Now it's kind of getting intense again, and some of us are worried about what's really happening. And so it's been just a really weird year. And I remember back in the early onset of COVID-19, you know, when we didn't really know much about it, and we weren't allowed to really go anywhere except if we needed food to the grocery store, uh, there was the, this first phase of the lockdown where it was like, ah, it was, <laughs> it was nice to have a break, you know, just to, just to sit back and not have to go anywhere. And then it was like, you know, things were kind of getting antsy a little bit and you wanted to get moving. And then I found myself anyways, sort of getting comfortable with that sort of new life of not really doing anything, eh? This, this new energy, sort of like this malaise sort of hit, and everyone was just kind of coasting through, getting used to uh, not really doing much, uh, not keeping the busy pace that a lot of us kept uh, in the BC times before COVID. And now, with uh, I find uh, I really had to pick myself back up after and said, hey, this is not the sort of uh, the pace of life that uh, I should be doing. You know, and I needed to sort of uh, kick myself and get moving again. And I remember that today because oftentimes I find myself doing that also with my spiritual gifts. Because God really gives us lots of things in our life that we're really good at. Okay? He gives each one of us uh, certain gifts, certain talents that we sometimes take for granted. You know, it's like having this best kept secret sort of thing. We like to keep it here and, and not use it. But God gives us certain things to use. And sometimes we got to sort of kick ourselves to get us moving again. There's a reason why God gave us certain talents and gave other people other talents. There's a reason when we work together uh, that we can really glorify him and all of us work together in unity to make sort of our lives what God has intended for it to be. But each one of us plays a part. So there's a couple of things we have to reflect on a little bit today. What are my own gifts and am I using them? And am I encouraging other people to use their gifts as well. And Jesus in the gospel today uses this parable about a landowner who gives his uh, fortune, gives his money to people, and the people who go use them for good and have a good return on them, he's pleased with. And the one who doesn't, the one who buries his gift, the one who buries his talent in the ground, doesn't use it, gives it back to his master sheepishly. 
okay? Then the master's really upset. Let's just dig there a little bit because why did this guy not use the one talent that he was given? Well, it says right here in the gospel, he says with his own word, I was afraid. I was afraid. And this really stuck out for me because sometimes it's fear that we don't use the gifts and talents that God gives us. Sometimes uh, we're nervous. Sometimes we uh, don't like to put ourselves out there. And sometimes we like to just be in our own uh, little world and, and not use really what God has given us. That's not good. We have to push through uh, that fear and be able to use what God has given us. You know, the scriptures is full of Jesus saying, do not be afraid. God has given us something for a purpose. And I often think about when we're afraid and we don't use the gifts that God has given us, what opportunities are we missing? What opportunities are we missing that God is placing in front of us? What, what sort of blessed moments are we missing in our lives when we're not living up to what God has just keeps placing in front of us? It's a good reflection uh, for us to have. So let's reflect. What are our gifts? How do we identify our gifts? Well, the first thing is, what am I really good at? And you know, it's not one of those things where we can pat ourselves on the shoulder, I'm really good at this. But to be honest with ourselves, what are we really good at? What do I find joy in? Where do I find my joy? Those are things that God has given us that we're good at and that we're not to use just for ourselves. We're to use for the benefit of other people. And are we people who also look at the gifts of others and encourage them? You know, it doesn't take much for us to say, good job. You know, uh, that's really well done. That's a real gift of yours. Continue to use it. But instead, I think um, our first line of defense is always to say, geez, I'm not as good as that person. And so it kind of moves us off to the side to not use our own gifts. But we got to get that sort of thinking out of our mind. And we got to be people who really take what God has given us and use it and then begin to see in our, with our own eyes and our own heart the gifts in other people. Because when the Christian community works together, there's nothing that can stop us. God has given us these tremendous gifts in order to move forward and to, to really continue to live out his will for us in our lives. So how do we take those talents and get a good return on them? We got to use them to our fullest nature, and we got to use them in the way that God has intended for us to use it. You know, not to boast about ourselves, not to be out there all the time and saying, look at me, I'm so good at this, but to say, God has given me these gifts, and I'm going to use them for what God has intended them for, and I'm going to give thanks to God for continuing to give me and for continuing to bless me with these things in my life. So let's reflect today on what our gifts are. Are we, are we in that malaise period where we're just not using them anymore? Have we gotten used to staying at home and sitting on the couch and not really using our gifts? Or can we find new ways today, even with our current situation, to use those things that God has given us? Can we, you know, pick up the phone or, or, or use something online to connect with people to use our gifts? Can we go out to, in little visits here and there with our safety measures in place to continue uh, to use the gifts that God has given us? Because in every moment, in every way, God is always using us uh, to bring his message of good news to others. We can't be ones out of fear or out of uh, sh <laughs> shyness or whatever it might be, nervousness, to not use those gifts. So let's uh, really, uh, really reflect on that today. Let's pray and ask God, am I really using my gifts? Am I thankful for these gifts? And how am I going to show that I'm grateful for these by really using them to what God has given them to me for? Together let us profess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And at this time we turn to the Lord with all of our prayers for this day. For church leaders, May God look graciously upon them as they faith faithfully steward the riches he has entrusted to them. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may the Lord guide us with wisdom in our role as stewards of the resources of this earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who experience the pain of separation and divorce, may the love of God sustain them through every trial. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the Holy Spirit grant us courage and strength as we live our call to discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our new bishop, Thomas Dowd, that the Holy Spirit may guide him as the shepherd of our diocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocation to the holy priesthood and religious life for the Diocese of Sault Ste. Marie, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may the Lord's mercy grant them eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer you all of our prayers today with great faith that you will hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, 
and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We We proclaim proclaim your your death, O Lord, and and profess your resurrection resurrection until you come come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And I offer to you a sign of God's peace. Lord, 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment or condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be with me, protection of mind, your body, and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for joining me today as we celebrate the Eucharist uh, together. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, uh, our, te our tech crew has been hard at work uh, making changes behind the scenes here in order for us uh, to advance our broadcast of this Mass to a live broadcast, uh, complete with the parishioners in the church and music as well. So stay tuned for that. That's still happening. There's lots of work behind the scenes happening and uh, little tech things that they're working out so that our broadcast uh, may be a very enjoyable uh, and a good experience uh, for you at home. So that's going to be happening in the next uh, few weeks. So stay tuned for those and we'll keep you updated, of course, on our parish website and our parish social media as well. Today is uh, sort of the last uh, Sunday that we call the th ordinary time, even though next week is still ordinary time. Uh, we don't say it in the title because next week we celebrate the solemnity of Jesus Christ, our King, the Feast of Christ the King. And so we celebrate and we'll reflect a little bit next week on is Jesus really the King uh, in our lives, you know, or has other stuff really crept in uh, and taken over a priority in our lives. I hope you have a great week this week, and I will see you here next Sunday to celebrate another Eucharist together. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please join us in praying the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel in our efforts to be protected from all evil in our personal lives and in the world around us. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.